what we've heard about today throughout all of the talks is lots of questions, lots of things that we don't know the answer to, and lots of questions, be they clinical or research questions, that we really need to answer in this condition if we're going to improve the care that we deliver to patients. There is very little evidence for the treatments that we currently use. There are very few, if any, randomised controlled trials um, for the pharmacological treatments that we use. So most of the time I go like that and I just you know, put my finger in the air and choose something um, from my personal um, clinical experience or from learning things at meetings like this. So what we really need to do if we're going to improve the care that we deliver to our patients is um, improve upon that. And as I've um, just said, what we've heard today is lots of questions that need to be answered, um, predominantly by research. So why now? Why, should, why do we need to begin to think about improving things? Well, because as a group, we come together and we hear that all of us are having difficulties making decisions about what are the best treatments to give to our patients, be they children, adolescents or adults. And POTS as a condition is clearly um, something that is causing huge amounts of um, disability. It's impacting significantly upon quality of life and it's costing our healthcare service enormous amounts of money. And if we're going to um, improve things, then we need to make sure that we have evidence-based treatments for our patients. So we've got a community here. We've got an international community with researchers who come together. And a year ago um, at Heart Rhythm UK um, conference in Birmingham, a group of us got together to begin to ask questions about um, POTS as a condition and begin to explore whether there was an appetite for national and international researchers to begin to look at questions that we might want to answer. And that coming together was organised and orchestrated by POTS UK, so the patient charity who are really at the heart of driving this um, forward because what they want to do is improve the quality of care that is given to their members. So for me, these are just three questions um, you know, that, that I get asked all the time in clinic or that, that burn a hole in the back. You know, as a researcher, you know, thing, I get out of bed in the morning because things really annoy me. I go into clinic and you know, I'm bugged by the fact that Nobody can tell me what the right answer is. And I want to know, is it, is it better to really push um, the non-pharmacological treatments? Or am I right that I push um, non-pharmacological before pharmacological? You know, what's the right thing to do? Because people ask me that. People say, you know, I've seen on a blog somewhere that one of my friends is on midodrine or octreotide. I want to try that. And I want to be able to articulate the evidence to them for why one treatment is better than another. Patients will often say to me, am I going to get better? And when will I get better? And, and at the moment, there isn't the evidence in the literature for me to answer that um, appropriately for patients. And what I want to be able to do when I see somebody in clinic who's referred to me is know that what I'm doing in clinic is the best that we can um, deliver for that patient. And at the minute, I think we do all right. But by the sounds of it, different people's clinics, just even here in the UK, never mind internationally, are very different in what we deliver to our patients. And actually, which model of care is best and what delivers the best outcomes? So in terms of trying to answer some of those questions, um, POTS UK um, did uh, the obvious thing and went actually out to their um, uh, membership to ask them what research, what were the questions that the, the members of POTS UK, so the, the patients themselves wanted. And these on the bottom are some of the responses that they gave in terms of the questions. They want biomedical research. They want to know what causes this condition. And they want to understand what different types of POTS 
if there are different phenotypes within the umbrella diagnosis of POTS, which types respond to um, certain types of treatments better than others. And in addition to that, the, the, the writing here is a bit small, but uh, Morwinna also um, with POTS UK did a monopoly game, which I thought was a brilliant idea, whereby they gave um, a round table group of people um, with POTS monopoly money and asked them, right, you know, if you had this amount of money to spend on research, where would you put your money? And this, these are the priorities that patients came up with. So predominantly research, uh, biomedical research, but also research focusing on um, identifying different phenotypes. So one of the um, things that we all came together for um, at the meeting in Birmingham last year was because the Medical Research Council in the UK had put out a call um, for something called uh, stratified medicine. So they were looking to fund across all uh, medical specialties um, applications to take conditions and stratify treatment um, according to underlying phenotypes. And we thought that we were in a good position um, with POTS to put together an application for that um, particular call. Um, this was the um, title of the application that we put in. Um, at the time, um, we um, tried to come up with a snappier um, title, um, but you know, essentially that was the um, uh, context of the application that we put in. We submitted it um, just before Christmas, um, and um, you don't, I don't want you to read um, this, but it's just cut and paste from the application. But there were three work streams for this application. The first was to develop a, a UK-based national um, registry for POTS patients, um, which was going to utilise something called the MS registry, which um, is um, coordinated out of Swansea. And that registry collects information at baseline and longitudinally on patients with MS and is a massive resource and is also extremely efficient in the way that it collects data. And what we wanted to do was um, take the expertise from the MS registry and apply that with um, patients with POTS and collect huge amounts of data and information not only from a big cohort at baseline but also longitudinally follow these people so that we could begin to identify patterns um, within um, a large cohort of patients with POTS. And we wanted also to um, develop a biobank of material um, from POTS patients that would mean that if there were um, opportunities to participate in for example, or to antibody studies, that we would be able to, in the UK, quickly respond to that. The second thing we wanted to do was um, to take cohorts of patients, um, NICS patients, um, patients from Queen's Square, and patients from Newcastle, and begin to um, look at patients um, who we were seeing in the clinic and look at objective measures um, so that we could begin to define different phenotypes and the overlap with some of the different comorbidities that we've heard described today. And then the final work stream was that we wanted this resource to act as a platform for clinical trials. So we wanted pharmaceutical companies to come to the UK with their drugs and us be able to give them um, access to a, a cohort of patients that would encourage them to do pharmaceutical trials or other types of clinical trials um, very quickly in a UK population. Because one of the problems we have in the UK is that POTS um, is sporadically seen in small numbers in lots of different kinds of clinics. But if we had a resource that pulled everybody together who was pre-consented to be approached again um, for clinical trials, and that would mean we could um, offer that as an opportunity to fast-track new treatments. So we didn't get the grant, unfortunately, the long and the short of it is. So we found out in January that we hadn't um, been um, awarded the money, but the feedback from the MRC was fairly positive. They said we were good and that this was a really significant condition and that we'd pulled together um, an, a really appropriate and high-profile team of researchers to deliver this and clinicians. They really liked the fact that it was being led by POTS UK. And what they 
felt was that we were just a bit early for stratification. Um, so what we really want to do is take that positive feedback and we've resubmitted this grant to the British Heart Foundation um, in the hope that they might be interested um, in taking um, the grant forward. So my last slide, so that was a UK cohort. And, and what's really important is um, the recognition as a, U as a community that we need good evidence to underpin um, the um, clinical practice that we carry out with our patients. But we also need information and evidence about the overlaps, the rele relevant comorbidities, so that we can begin to inform um, policy makers as well as commissioners. So what we want to do is um, continue to grow um, this as an opportunity and, and to begin to incorporate into, um, if we are successful with the British Heart Foundation, any questions that researchers or clinicians would like to ask from this as a resource. And that if people internationally are interested in being involved, if we don't get the money from the British Heart Foundation, then that might um, open up opportunities for us to um, think about applying for European grants or um, American grants. Thank you.